What we know today is a top 10 Catholic university and Ohio's largest independent university grew from a community called Nazareth. It started in 1850 in a farmhouse with four men, a priest, a teacher, a cook, and a gardener. They were all Marianists, a Catholic religious order that grew out of lay communities working to revive the religious spirit in the aftermath of the French Revolution. The four Marianists and the men and women who followed them gave a special set of attributes and attitudes to this university that we have inherited. These deeply rooted Catholic and Marianist traditions have set UD apart from other schools. Our university is known for the feeling of family that envelops everyone who is a part of UD. Our distinguished public role has evolved from an early and lasting commitment to provide both service to and leadership in the Dayton area community. But perhaps most important is our mission, a mission founded on a dedication to the development of complete persons. The story of Nazareth is about a farm with a school. In 1849, Dayton was ravaged by a cholera epidemic. A Marianist priest from France, Father Leo Meyer, had just arrived in Cincinnati to establish a base of operations for the Marianists when he was asked to travel to Dayton to assist at Emmanuel Catholic Church, where the staff and many members were ill. Soon after his arrival, the entrepreneurial missionary made the acquaintance of John Stewart, a successful farmer whose frontier spirit had fallen victim to the epidemic. His infant daughter, Mary Louisa, had died of cholera, and he decided to sell his Dewberry farm, 120 acres on the southern edge of the city limits. Recognizing the farm's potential, Father Meyer bargained for the purchase of the farm, the Stewart home, and the caretaker's cottage for a price of $12,000. Father Meyer was penniless, but Stewart accepted a simple Medal of St. Joseph as collateral and agreed to terms of 6% interest for 12 years, terms which were dutifully honored by the Marianists. John Stewart unknowingly helped to perpetuate one of the strongest traditions of the Marianists, the partnership of laymen and women with religious brothers and sisters to accomplish shared objectives. Long before the establishment of the University of Dayton, such families of shared interest and circumstance were being cultivated by the Society of Mary and the Daughters of Mary Immaculate. The same extended family notion characterizes our university community today. On September 3, 1850, Brother Max Zaylor opened an elementary school with 12 Catholic boys from throughout the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. St. Mary's School for Boys held classes in the Stewart Homestead until it was destroyed by fire in December of 1855. It was then replaced by a humble structure called St. Mary Convent, in which classes were held and boarders resided. In 1865, a simple edifice was built adjacent to the convent. It was to house the normal school or teacher preparation program for young brothers and novices. Many years later, that building would be renamed Zaylor Hall in honor of the teacher who opened St. Mary's School. In 1866, a small building was constructed to house the growing Marianist faculty. Today, Liberty Hall houses the campus ministry offices. Zaylor and Liberty Halls are the oldest buildings on the University of Dayton campus. The next endeavor of the Marianists was to build a freestanding chapel. Marianist superiors in France insisted on moderation and simplicity and approved plans for the Chapel of the Immaculate Conception. The chapel was built in 1868 at a cost of $40,000. Its wooden beams were pegged together, four oil lamps provided what light was needed, and a single wood-burning stove provided what heat could be justified. The chapel's distinctive cupola rose high above Dayton and soon became a landmark. As the enterprise of Nazareth developed, common sense planning prevailed. St. Mary's Hall was nicknamed Zaylor's Folly when it was built in 1870 because it was then the largest building in Dayton and deemed by many to be too tall. But through the years, it has served virtually every major need of a university community. Its flexibility is the product of its size and simplicity. Today, it's the administrative center of the university. In 1883, Fire destroyed the convent building, and in the following year, St. Joseph Hall was constructed in its place. 
St. Joseph Hall was sturdily built with lumber from the Nazareth property and bricks passed by hand from a nearby brickworks. Over the years, St. Joseph Hall has housed classrooms, laboratories, offices, a museum, and a print shop. It has served as a residence hall and even a press box. The story of Nazareth is not merely a story of bricks and mortar. However, its buildings are testimony to the simple practicality that was characteristic of the Marianists. Their buildings were built simply and were built to last. Their legacy for a contemporary university is unmistakable. It's hard for us today to imagine the nature of education at St. Mary's School for Boys, St. Mary's Institute, and St. Mary's College, the forerunners of the University of Dayton. The operation of the farming interests, the maintenance of the physical plant, and even the construction of new buildings were consciously integrated into the education of the so-called Boys of St. Mary's. The Marianists labored then, as they do today, to develop the talents of their students and staff, not to mold them to fit a particular image. St. Mary's was a combination grade school, college preparatory school, trade school, teacher's training institute, novitiate, and college. The collegiate level programs, which were approved by the state in 1882, were among Ohio's first at a privately supported degree-granting institution. The Marianists built a curriculum around a theme of educating complete persons, professionals prepared to assume useful roles in the changing world of the post-industrial revolution. The academic program included an emphasis on the practical disciplines of business and commerce, laboratory sciences, engineering and technology, and teaching. Of course, the religious development of the Boys of St. Mary's was not ignored. Key elements of this development were the Marianist devotion to Mary, the Mother of God, and their loyalty to the example of William Joseph Chaminade, founder of the Marianists in France in 1817. Father Chaminade recognized in the Blessed Mother a perfect integration of faith, common sense, firmness of will, and patient sacrifice. The Marianists of Nazareth developed the Boys of St. Mary's by example, by teaching, and by prayer to emulate the qualities of the woman to whom they dedicated their lives and the work of their school. The development of mind, body, and soul was vigorously pursued outside the classrooms as well. On warm days, recreation for the Boys of St. Mary's included afternoons at the Old Swimming Hole, one of three ponds which once dotted the property where Marianist Hall now stands. In the winter, the skating pond provided entertainment, or the boys could organize a pool tournament in the game room, which was built as part of Chaminade Hall in 1904. Activities at St. Mary's included a marching band, which was the pride of Dayton as early as the turn of the century. A playhouse or gymnasium was built in 1874 to house many of the school's activities, including rallies and convocations, theatrical offerings, and athletic contests. The exterior walls of the playhouse are now incorporated into the Reich Center, which is home to the Center for International Programs. The athletic teams were numerous and included what we know today as intramural and intercollegiate sports. The Varsity Saints, the Alumni Cadets, and the Hilltoppers of St. Mary's, as they were called, proudly represented Dayton in football and basketball competitions throughout the Midwestern and Northeastern United States. The St. Mary Cadets, an alumni basketball team, earned the title World Champions in 1913 after defeating the reigning champs, the Buffalo Germans, a professional team. In 1923, the school's nickname was changed to the Flyers in recognition of the most significant of Dayton's technological contributions to the world, that of powered flight. The Flyers continue to carry the name of Dayton throughout the country today, as our men and women student athletes compete in a variety of intercollegiate sports. Today, exercising the mind, body, and spirit is an important part of the University of Dayton, just as it was in the days of St. Mary's. Students participate in a variety of fitness activities, including intramural sports, skill clinics, sports clubs, and outdoor pursuits. Another quality of the university that took root during the days of Nazareth and St. Mary's Institute is our commitment to serve the Dayton community. 
the Marianists began to create a public dimension to their independent enterprise through their friendship with their neighbors, the Pattersons. This family owned the adjacent stone mill farm and operated a sawmill. In 1883, following the death of their father, the Patterson boys, John Henry and Frank, became interested in the cash register designed and manufactured by John Ritty of Dayton. Their interest in purchasing the young business was greeted skeptically by their mother, but then she consulted with brother Max Zaylor, her trusted neighbor, about the wisdom of such an investment of the family's money. Brother Zaylor heard the arguments of the mother and sons and told Mrs. Patterson that he thought there would be a great future in the cash register business. Shortly thereafter, Brother Zaylor bought 28 acres of the Patterson field adjacent to Nazareth, which provided needed capital for the Patterson's enterprise. Today, Bojan Field and Kettering Laboratories stand on the former Patterson Field. The Patterson's cash register business grew to become the NCR Corporation. The University of Dayton's recent purchases of land and buildings from NCR have opened up new opportunities, opportunities that improve our academic offerings and contribute to the Dayton community. In 1913, a disastrous flood engulfed the city of Dayton. It was a community crisis, and the Marianists responded. The high ground of St. Mary's became a temporary shelter to some 800 homeless Daytonians. Rescue and relief operations were opportunities for the students and staff of St. Mary's to serve their neighbors. The students, faculty, and staff of the University of Dayton have proudly continued to serve the Dayton area through numerous service organizations and community outreach programs. The FIT Center for Leadership and Community builds relationships with communities with the goal of helping the poor and marginalized as well as educating community builders. Ethos provides service learning opportunities for engineering students. They have used their knowledge and skills to bring clean drinking water to villages in Africa, solar refrigeration to keep vaccination safe in India, and a distillation system that transforms orange peels into useful oils in South America. Campus Ministries Center for Social Concern unites faith and action through numerous programs including service clubs, retreats, and breakout trips. One of the most popular service activities is Christmas on campus. The campus is transformed into a Christmas wonderland and students adopt nearly 1,200 Dayton City school children to share a magical evening. In 1920, the school that had developed into a comprehensive university adopted a new name which dramatically wedded its future to that of the community. The name University of Dayton would henceforth proclaim this institution's loyalty and appreciation to the community that had adopted it as its own. In 1923, the university offered its first session of summer courses. Like those of the old law school, summer classes were open to women as well as men. In 1935, UD opened a college for women. Women were soon integrated into all classes, and UD became the first co-educational Catholic university in the United States. The Marianists of Nazareth and St. Mary's gave real meaning to the educational theory of developing complete persons. Through the years, this philosophy has become the hallmark of Catholic higher education. But at the University of Dayton, this is not just a platitude. It is the very foundation of the educational endeavor, an essential element in Marianist philosophy and practice. The University of Dayton today aspires to the same personal development of its students as did its founders over a century and a half ago. This is the story of our origins and early development. Father Shamanad taught us that new times demand new methods. The story of the University of Dayton is one of continual adaptation and progress. Reading the signs of the times, serving our modern world by educating the leaders of the future, students prepared to be responsible citizens of the world community. Times change, but our values are timeless. These values are our heritage. From the Marianists who have preceded us and from the many other men and women who have worked alongside them to build this community. As we continue their work, as we write new chapters in our story, we trust that our efforts will be guided and blessed by a priest, 
a teacher, a cook, and a gardener, who dedicated themselves to Jesus Christ and established the heritage of Nazareth. <music>